All right, I made Indiana Jones leather strap. So I made this camera strap a while ago. Uh, it works fine, it's just big and bulky. And I went a little crazy with the hardware. I wanted something smaller and lighter, so I decided to make Indy's bag strap from Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's plenty of info about these straps online. There's three Indiana Jones movies, and they each use a different buckle. And the straps are all different colors. Uh, I don't really care about being super movie accurate, but I did want to go with the buckle from Raiders, which is a tri-glide buckle. So the strap is super simple, but at the start of the project, I was a little confused about how it was all assembled. So I did this quick sketch just to help myself understand how to put it all together. Okay, first thing is the leather. I got this veg tan double shoulder from Tandy Leather. Uh, it's pretty much bottom of the barrel when it comes to quality. Uh, it's not the highest of quals. It's got wrinkles and chemical stains, but for this project, I think it will work in my favor because I'm going for a more weathered look anyways. Uh, I'm still new to leather, so I don't mind using the cheap hides just to try things out. I'm using a one inch buckle, so to make sure that the strap slides through the buckle easily, I cut the width of the strap to be just under an inch. This is my first time dyeing leather, so plenty of mistakes were made. You'll see me go back and forth between dyeing and then beveling edges and then dyeing again. I'm adding Neat's Foot Oil here because I've read that it helps the dye spread more evenly. And I think it worked because the dye went on pretty well. I've seen dye apply tons of ways online. You can wipe it on with daubers, paint it on with a brush, you can dip the entire piece. Uh, I decided to use a spray gun from Harbor Freight, it was like 12 bucks. And it went on well, there weren't any streaks or blotchy areas, so I was pretty happy with it. I think I ended up wasting more dye by using the gun because of the overspray. But it was really consistent, so that's probably the trade-off there. I should have beveled these edges before I dyed it, but it's not too much of a bummer to go back and reapply the dye. I went back and forth on this, but I decided to dye the flesh side as well, just to make it all the same color. I think either way it would have looked alright. Okay, now that it's all dyed, I'm just uh, testing out the length here. And it seems good, but I don't know, I'm just making this up as I go. I got a lot of these tools, like these round punches, from a leather starter kit on Amazon. What am I doing with that cola can? Oh, I get it. Now I'm just going to use a foam brush to touch up the edges and any other spots that I might have missed. I think next time I dye leather I'm going to try just brushing it on instead of spraying. Just to see how it turns out. I'm just using tokenol and a wood slicker to burnish the edges.
Here's a comparison of a burnished edge and an unburnished edge. Okay, it's getting there. Now I just need to add the hardware and it'll be done. I decided to use Chicago screws instead of rivets because I might want to take this apart later and the screws will make that a little easier. I've heard that these screws like to unscrew themselves so I'm using thread locker to keep them in place. Contact cement would be a better option here, but I don't have any, so I'm going with wood glue. These black uh, metal snap hooks are not on Indy's strap. Uh, I think he has silver rings that attach to his bag. But this is going to be a camera strap and these are perfect for attaching to my camera. So that's what I'm going with. Okay, this hardware is the last step and there it is all done. I'm happy with it. It's nice and light. And once it gets some more miles on it, it'll be more flexible. And there's a side by side just to compare. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.